Members of the National Hall of Fame, recipients, family, and friends, it's my honor and pleasure to speak on behalf of uh, Dave Errett. Uh, the Errett family is well known in Indiana and throughout the United States and the world as being a wrestling family. His mom, Ginny, uh, his sister, Lindy, and Zach, all were involved one way, or the, one way or the other with pairing and with officiating, with Zach doing two Olympic games so far. Uh, Dave for thir uh, has been a, an official for 30 years. He got his national license in 1988. His, uh, uh, he has worked 19, give me, give me a little bit of, uh, 19 world team trials, six Olympic team trials, which you heard about last night. Uh, internationally, I worked a lot of them with Dave. His confidence and his consistency on the mat became his trademark. He was a model for younger officials on what you should do, how you should do it, and what you can achieve, what you can achieve as an official. He received the gold whistle for the outstanding official in the world in Paris at the Greco World Championships in 2003, I believe. He also has gotten awards in the United States as Official of the Year for the United States Wrestling Officials Association and Mort Geller and Phil Pertusi, which all deal with teaching and being a mentor to a lot of the younger and experienced officials. Um, to me, though, Dave's highlight is his ability to understand the rules. I, I did clinics for years and I, the first thing I would do, I would look and make sure that Dave was sitting in the front row. And because when Dave, when we, when he get the, when he would get the rule book, he would take a highlighter and go through it, put little tabs out to the side. So when I was giving clinics at the Olympic trials or nationals or whatever, I'd always maintain eye contact with Dave, and he was he was like a master of the head nod and sign language. So if I said something wrong, he'd go make all these signals. Tom Clark used to say he should have, he probably invented sign language with, uh, and should have taught it in school. Um, he, would, he would use the rule book as just about like a Bible. Uh, he was my rule book. If I had questions, I would call him, he would answer them. And he, he was always maintained this calm demeanor on the mat and it was like a characteristic that we wish all of our officials would maintain so that we, we, we didn't have, we wouldn't have uh, problems with, you know, rabbit ears or whatever you want to call them, where officials would get distracted from the job that they were supposed to be doing. Um, if I had, I guess one of the highest honors would be if I had to choose an official to referee my son's matches or one of my wrestlers' matches, I would choose Dave over a lot of the officials that were probably uh, in it longer or made it higher or whatever because, because his, his big thing was his integrity, his reliability, his dependability, and his consistency. I am, I am very honored to present David Errett as the receiver of the 2019 Meritorious Official Award for the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Thank you. You know, why would someone spend 31 years of their life volunteering at tournaments all across the country and around the world? And I started asking myself that question as I was getting prepared for to speak this morning. See, he, the, the 31 is the number of years that he has spent as a licensed national referee. And during that time, he has refereed 25 world championships and been a part of 24 world team and Olympic trials. Not bad for somebody who never wrestled. But I kept coming back to that question. Why does somebody spend that amount of time doing a job that we know isn't always that much fun? I've got a couple of stories I think will help answer that question. In 2005, my parents decided to buy a new house. The problem was when it was time to move in, my father was scheduled to be at a wrestling tournament in Lithuania, and we knew there was no chance he wasn't going. And as I started thinking about over the years, I don't remember him ever turning down a national or international assignment. 
wrestling was very important to him. Over the course of my dad's career, he's refereed every major freestyle and Greco-Roman tournament in the world, except for one, and that was the Olympic Games. And it was a real travesty that he wasn't selected for, or wasn't chosen for at least one of them. He was up for possible selection in 2004 and 2008. Now in 2004, we knew that was probably gonna be tough, but in 2008, it should have been a done deal. Unfortunately, like always, politics came into play and he was left out. Now at that time, my dad was 58 and he was only two years away from having to retire because of the mandatory age requirement for international refereeing. So instead of staying around for two more years, he opted to retire at that time so that someone else might have the chance to be promoted and have an opportunity to work the 2012 Olympics. Probably the biggest lesson that I ever learned from him came from how he handled that experience. See, in 2008, when he wasn't selected, I knew he was upset. Hell, I was angry. But for him, despite being upset, I never once heard him complain to others or myself about his situation. And he certainly had all the right to do so. He had done everything right for years to only come up short because of politics. Not because he wasn't qualified or one of the best referees in the world at that time, but because somebody didn't like him. And that's really difficult, that's a really difficult pill to swallow. Like many others, and probably including myself, it would have been really easy to hang it up at that time and say, you know what, I've had enough, I'm done. My father, he can referee. He worked the world team and Olympic trials for the next eight years on the 2008 Olympics. And to go back to that original question, why does somebody spend that amount of time refereeing at events all over the country and the world. And to me, it's really clear. He loved what he did and he wanted to make a difference. It was never about reaching the Olympic Games. Certainly that was his goal, but that was not why he did it. Because if it was just about that, he would have got out in 2008. But he didn't, he stayed as a referee and he's still active today. I'm extremely proud of him and very blessed that he's being honored here this weekend because his career will not be defined by what he wasn't selected for, but will be defined by the impact he made in the sport and the number of people that he positively influenced and mentored along the way. His selection here this weekend to me is a statement saying job well done. Dad, congratulations on a stellar career and a job well done. Thank you.